At NASA, uh, we work very closely with different contractors, and one of them that had kind of a corner on the market for uh, structural analysis software was Don Whetstone, who had his own small company, bigger than, uh, which we thought was even uh, better than Nastran. Uh, I had, had worked on Nastran, but suddenly this was much faster and better and, and so on. So we decided to work with him, and he would also give us the source code. So NASA people like tinkering on cars, they like to get inside and see what's there. So some of us saw what's inside, and wow, this is really, really neat stuff. But then one day I got a memo from our division chief that said, we're no longer going to support uh, source code because it costs extra to have the source code, so we're just going to give you a black box to work with, and how will you, uh, what do you feel about that? Oh, I thought that was really bad. It's like you can't understand what's inside, and if we had a mission critical thing, and NASA people then wouldn't know what was happening. So I wrote a memo back and said I was important. Of course, it didn't really respond, but our division said, uh, if you want to, you can maintain the latest version and work with that, and we'll just get the binary version, a black box for, for it from then on to save some money. So some of us worked with this version, and we built it and improved it and made it even better than the other one. And in the process, new computers came along, and it allowed us to do things in parallel and uh, vectorization. So we developed a code called Vector Sparse Solver, and then a uh, General Purpose Equation Solver that came out of that. Yeah, some people say it's kind of serendipity how things happen, but it, if you look a little deeper, there's probably reasons why things are serendipitous. Uh, in the case of GPS, we knew that we had a really hot capability for solving equations, and at that time the web was coming there, so we put a challenge out on the web, can anybody solve these problems faster than us? And so people would try things, and sometimes they'd have improvements that could be made, so that was, so we, we felt we had probably the fastest equation solver in the world. Uh, and then somebody told me there's a new company that doesn't use CPUs, they use field programmable gate arrays where you can do thousands of things per cycle compared to CPU which only does one or maybe a couple per cycle. Why don't you take your real fast equation solver and put it on this new hardware called a hypercomputer and then you get the speed of the hardware plus the speed of the solver. So I called the president of this company called Starbridge and said, would you guys be willing to let us test our equation solver? He said, yeah, that might be nice, except right now we're finishing up our contracts with our San Francisco attorney, or our, our patents. But in about six months, call us back and we can. So I called him back, and at that time he said, yes, we'll let you be the first ones out and see what's going, going on. So uh, we went out there, saw what was going on, and in the process we ended up uh, actually uh, they let us bring one of their hypercomputers here to Langley, which was the first one in the U.S. that came. And uh, so then we have experimented with it and found out it was indeed very promising for solving uh, problems compared to traditional computers. Uh, and this then uh, experiment and testing things for engineering and, and uh, scientific applications uh, led to another large project because NASA was looking at future things that might impact our new program to the moon and Mars. And so I was, I, I put in a suggestion, why don't we look at that? And that suggestion was rolled together with another suggestion and resulted in a $15 million project to exploit these field programmable gate arrays to do computations to support the uh, mission to the moon and Mars. So this one little uh, experimental thing kind of led to a large uh, NASA project. Well, what, what it has happened, we still have our hypercomputer that we use and we have it available to our new project, which has just been six months into it. It's a four-year project. And Bob Hodson, my uh, partner on the project, we were the ones that put the information into headquarters to propose it. Uh, Fortunately, ours was the only project where we had two people, and uh, I happen to be leaving to go to Oak Ridge now, so he's taking over that project. The project is going to use field programmable gate arrays, the same type in our hypercomputer, uh, Intel, uh, not Intel, but uh, Xilinx, and those will be stackable, and uh, they will be expandable, and using the same type of software 
uh, that we have used on our hypercomputer. Software is one of the big things. The software really is not software anymore. You have hardware, you have software, and then those are merging in this case of field programmable gateways to be called gateware. So the hardware and software is gateware. And not only is the gateware just a bunch of instructions or commands that are like one line, two lines, three lines in a uh, linear type fashion, but it is all graphical software with icons. Uh, and that is very much like LabVIEW, if people have used LabVIEW. So it makes it very easy to come up with algorithms to solve things and to use them. So that, that technology is going into our uh, reconfigurable, uh, scalable computer. It's called RSC, uh, NASA project. 